One of the most important things that you can ever learn how to do, arguably, if not the most important thing that you'll ever learn how to do in this space is learning how to protect your own digital assets. I wanted to pinpoint this tonight because it's extremely important, especially given where I think that we're potentially going to go here in the very, very near future or could go in the very near future, obviously not financial advice. But Crypto Man at Crypto underscore Man was victim to a SIM swap attack. Essentially, that's when somebody is able to claim that they have the rights to your cell phone account and they are able to swap out or be allocated with a new SIM card, put it into a new phone and have access to all of your data information, potentially cryptocurrency assets as well. And it just goes to show, you know, make sure that whenever you have a cell phone carrier that you are taking additional security measures, you're reaching out to your cell phone carrier, you're telling them to put a lock on your SIM card, uh, even going as far as to remove online access into your account, because I believe this is what happened to him, and just using everything directly via phone uh, and, and putting locks on where unless you're physically there in person with an ID, whatever your carrier is willing to do as far as safeguards, I would recommend doing so. Same thing goes with when you see scammers out there trying to present themselves as people in this community. I know if I look at my YouTube video comments, there are so many King Solomon scammers out there that are asking you to come onto a WhatsApp, uh, asking you to reach out to them on Telegram, asking you them or asking you to DM them. I will never ever do that, and never give away your seed phrase, never give away your personal information. Essentially, doing any of those things is a, is basically similar to if you were to give a random stranger that asked you uh, all of your bank account information, your social security number, everything. So don't make any of those mistakes. You know, luckily, Crypto Man had some of his stuff on Ledger. And I think that this didn't hit, I know it hit him hard, but I don't know if it hit him as hard as he could have potentially been hit because I've seen people get wiped out completely. So if you have questions, ask, reach out on Twitter to the communities that you are having questions in. Uh, if, if you're getting these messages and, you know, people will probably tell you if you just even ask in an open forum that things are or maybe maybe are not a scam, but always assume something is a scam unless proven otherwise. All right, moving forward, I want to talk about where I expect this market to get to and in the time frame that I expected to get it there. Uh, I, I wanted to also say thank you, everybody. Uh, you know, I have made the decision to go full Crypto, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be a two-week transition or if it's going to be a little bit of a longer transition. I don't want to completely screw my job over either. Uh, I want to make sure that there's a smooth transition there. So just trying to do things in the right way. I never like to burn any bridges. Um, we're going to talk about where I expect the market to go. And first and foremost, I caught this yesterday. Uh, I know we see a lot about NFTs, but this is Hugo, obviously the C uh, co-founder and CEO of Flare Networks. And obviously deeply involved with Songbird as well, because Songbird is the test net or the canary network within Flare Networks. And he talked about this Bazooka Chicks NFT drop. Uh, full transparency, I obviously pick some of these up when I see the CEO of Flare posting about something like this. I'm not going to not do something. Uh, obviously, I didn't consider what Hugo posted to be financial advice. But for me, the first uh, profile picture NFT uh, minted and launched directly on Songbird was was a big deal. Uh, and, you know, we'll see where those go. I think that you also got an allocation one-to-one -one Songbird Punk in the future as well with those. So, and none the least, th those things were like 25 Songbird a piece, so like 10 USD a piece to mint these things when they came out. I think they have sold out. Uh, and they're still in the open market. I think that they're still relatively cheap, or at least in my opinion. We'll see where they go, though. Again, th these are speculative moves when you're dealing with NFTs and stuff like that. But, like I said, paying attention to what Hugo's posting and what he's trying to support. So, all right. Last but not least, I wanted to share look into Bitcoin.com with all of you, and I have to give a shout out to Crypto Crew University. I've done this before. Uh, I, I've gotten a lot of information from that dude over the past few years. He started in the beginning of 2018, basically, I, I believe around that time frame, talking about Bitcoin's price action. I think he does do some alts as well on YouTube. Uh, he presented look into Bitcoin.com a while ago, probably about a year ago. And if you don't know how to read charts, this is a very, very good tool, in my opinion, to potentially gauge where the market is at. And there's multiple different tools on here. You can go under charts. Uh, I use Bitcoin Investor Tool. I use a 200-week moving average heat map. 
Uh, I would use a pi cycle top indicator, golden ratio multiplier, Bitcoin logarithmic growth curves. I know that a lot, a lot of people talk about the stock to flow model. This really is for like, I do, I'll, I'll use trading view and stuff like that to actually populate charts as well. Um, but this gives you kind of a good gauge. Like, so for the two year moving average multiplier, I would use something like this uh, from a very simple metric to like determine out, okay, if we break above the top trend line here, which is the 730 moving average um, multiplied by five, you know, how, how long do we really have until the market actually tops out? We can look back at 2000. 13, we're seeing like the 19th of March until the 9th of April, uh, which was that intermediate cycle. Now, you can, interestingly enough, we didn't break above that during this term. Uh, and then you can go to 11th of November 2013 to the 29th of November. So only a few weeks, right? And now if you remember back in 2017, we really broke above near the end. I could zoom in on these things. I just don't want to lose scope here. But, you know, 17th of November and we topped out the 17th of December. So 30 days is not a not a ton of time. Uh, so, you know, I watched this very much so. And this is where we were at back in that March uh, time frame here. Never broke above it. I'm curious if we break above it this time. 200-week uh, moving average heat map. This essentially is just, you know, giving you a heads up for overbought, oversold. You can see the 200-week moving average here. Um, Pi cycle top indicator, which I also used for... Potentially dictating out when the previous top was going to be, which, you know, this thing crossed 11th of May, um, which is right when we broke down below that. So, but you have to use these things like almost in conjunction as well. I love the golden ratio multiplier because for me, the most important thing that I do over the next three years, uh, along with potentially selling during this market or selling X amount during this market, is when do I really buy in? And, you know, I'm looking for this, the bottom fib, obviously, right here, and then seeing buying opportunities, you know, arguably some of the best buying opportunities that have existed. So you can look, this takes you back to December 2018, this flash. This is when Bitcoin was right around $3,800. It flashed again, March of 2020. Bitcoin was at, dipped down to about five grand. And we actually had this flash real quick, uh, July 20th, which I shared on Patreon, but you know we're we're starting to tackle some of these uh, some of these fib levels at this point in time. So, uh, and then moving forward, the Bitcoin logarithmic growth curves, which is, interestingly enough, I mean you use this thing, and really this median line is very very important to dictate out where this market goes, how long it takes t us to get to potentially the top. So you can look and you can look back in the past and see when we actually closed. We're kind of mirroring, in my opinion, this 2013 right now, and. This is what 2013 looked like. We closed below the medium. Median had a lot of trouble there. Broke back above it and made a power move to our parabolic cycle top. I like trying to keep things a little bit more clear. I mean, those are really simple things that you can use and just learn how to look at them. And maybe they'll help you, maybe they won't. But I wanted to at least present that information to you guys. So uh, these are the log growth curves again, which I just removed just for clarity's sake. I would usually have like the 50 EMA posted up on here as well. And for me, I, you know, those log growth curves where they kind of peak out along with the actual, this trend line that I have that I have drawn out, I have to also give credit to Crypto Group. Um, this has basically provided us with support for every parabolic cycle that we've had. I mean, if I repopulate the log growth curves again, you can see that this trend line has provided support for every bottom that we've had in the market. Maybe I'll blow this up. And... You know, we bottomed out, we had our parabolic portion, November 2013, bottomed out, parabolic portion, December 2017, bottomed out. But interestingly enough, price action broke below this trend line. So I keep looking at, I mean, honestly, I'm really looking at this, this level right here. And it's either, you know, the first, potentially by the 1st of December, which sounds insane, right? We may see $137,000, $138,000 Bitcoin, give or take. Now, if you extrapolate that out to January 2022, it gets a little bit higher, obviously, $150,000 Bitcoin. That's not guaranteed, but, you know, I'm looking at monthly candles right now. I like bigger trigger uh, triggers. So this month could be very, very, very exciting. You could look at the weekly as well if you want to, if you want to kind of nail it down a little bit more. But yeah, so I did want to tell you guys, you know, I did a live stream, but you know, this is going to be very much so an everyday type thing for me. Uh, I'm going to make it a point even before I leave my, my job right now to do a video every day. Uh, try to do a video every day and then hopefully 
do some more videos, maybe two a day if I find some deep divey type content, whatever. Obviously with these trend lines, you got to readjust them for weekly or monthly. I, I like looking at the monthly and bigger time frames, but yeah, I look forward to finding more information for you guys. I look forward to finding some of those like um, holy grail type documents that certainly exist out there and will continue to exist out there, but I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you guys on a daily basis about things. I just am excited to be here and I'm excited to continue doing what I've done for the past few years and hopefully uh, provide even more value uh, based on... Um, based on just being able to put a little bit more time in for everybody. So, all right, I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Later.